welcome to interviews and insights from our Southwest Smart Manufacturing meetings. A recurring series of events run from the RDI Hub, this event was kindly sponsored by IDM, the Irish Digital Engineering and Advanced Manufacturing Cluster, which supports businesses to collaborate, innovate and grow. Find out more at IDEAM.ie. I am here with Michael O'Gorman, the CEO of Pathway Business Solutions, who is speaking here today in the Hub about growth mindset and business success. Michael, you are very welcome here today. Um, it was a very interesting presentation earlier on, really Thank enjoyed you. it. Thank you. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your background and then we'll go into Pathway Business Solutions and what it is and what exactly you do? Yeah, well, I guess um, probably a little bit unusual and it's quite um, a, a varied background. So... Um, as a business manager uh, with the Murphy Group in the UK, I specialised in transformation, transforming businesses, helping them discover where they're at, how we can grow value, how we develop them, and then how we transform into some projected future vision. Okay. Um, at the same time, I studied an MBA at Teesside University. And uh, strangely enough, um, my thesis was on uh, strategic alliances. And I believe in the power of partnership with the right mindset. Mm -hmm. um, so from that, then I was invited onto a steering group at the university to help solve some problems. And um, so that was my sort of a education. So then I went on to do a postgrad in education. So I had the business first, followed by education, and then followed by uh, with Trinity College Dublin um, a postgrad in innovation and enterprise development so that kind of tooled me up but uh, as a, uh, a lifelong learner um, so my background then was I moved from um, the Murphy group um, I was approached by Balfour Beatty to do something similar for them um, and with that for another decade very same thing transforming uh, through projects contracts and businesses but predominantly moving from operating company to operating company very same thing so that helped me develop uh, the why I do business. And I guess if I, like today, when we were talking about the, the, quite the why, the how, and the what, and we talked about Simon Sinek, um, I was inspired by him, and that helped me sort of frame why I do what I do. So Pathway Business Solutions, um, and my own passion is in discovering and transforming potential into exceptional businesses. And I guess if I had to add to that, I'd say that I believe that, um, and this quote sort of comes from uh, Professor Bill Owlett of um, the Sloan School of Management in MIT, um, where passion meets discipline. Um, that's where craft is made. So we term craft as value. People buy craft. People look for value. That's lovely. That's lovely. I, I was about to ask you about, about Simon Sinek and discovering your why. Yeah. Um, that has a profound impact on you. So can you tell me how it affects your, your day-to-day work? I think it, it ties in with, with some of this, uh, something else we spoke about today, which is growth mindset, because um, in, in any project, uh, contract, or business, having like-minded people with a similar kind of passion that understand what the purpose is, which is their why, the reason they exist, the raison d'etre. Um, I think that... When I came across Simon Sinek, it just he just said it the way it is and the way I believed it to be, simple as. And, um, you know, he's an expert, he's a leader, he's a situation leader. And, um, yeah, people follow him. Yeah, I'm a big fan myself. Good, good, good. <laughs> Very good. Um, loads of really interesting content to unpack in your presentation, but uh, I suppose one of the things was, uh, I remember you outlined a multitude of reasons as to why businesses fail, but the main one you said was complacency. So can you can you talk a little around this, please? Yeah, um, I guess it's the question is so why do we become complacent? Become complacent really is is what it's about. But I would place. I came across something similar when I was doing a value management practitioner back in the nineties um, when they were transforming from public to private sector in the UK through the water sector, the rail, etc. And <clears throat> I guess through no reflection on the public sector. But uh, what privatisation brought to it was the investment of money and being driven by serious performance measurement. Um, so what's at the centre of what causes complacency? Well, if I had to think of a couple, um, I would say an example of that is the housing crisis at the moment. 
it's all hands to the pump. <clears throat> we're trying to train people up. We're lacking skill sets. Uh, we're lacking experts. We've got a lot of youth that we need for the construction sector overseas. And to allow that to happen, I would say that we hadn't got our eye on what we needed to do, which was to serve um, our social need. Mm -hmm. And with that, I guess that happened because we we were complacent in not building houses for the last couple of decades, at least, or, or more. And now we're going to build a lot, but not only have we recovered it, but we're now we're looking at uh, Wexford have a centre um, of high performance building alliance. And I think that'll help drive on standards of building now that we're really at it. Um, I suppose you asked me for two or three, I guess, if I had to say again, well, we, I mentioned performance and I'd say that low overall performance standards, sort of having appropriate meetings around targeted performance measures and managing the business towards performance. So creating a culture of growth mindset, but backed up by creating a culture of managing a process of performance. Okay. And can you give me your main reason? I was going to ask you for three again. That's that's okay. Liam's, Liam's rule yeah. of three all the time. But uh, we'll start with one. Uh, can you give me a main reason why a company should adopt a growth mindset? If just one core reason, what should it be? Well, a growth mindset sits hand in glove with continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> continuous improvement is something the government are investing heavily in, which is lean. Um, and... Possibly if we change the terminology from lean to a continuous improvement process, that where we failed before and where we're actually making ground now is that through a process such as that, we're actually creating short-term wins and that allows us to celebrate short-term wins, which gives us a momentum and then changes the way we think, changes the way we feel uh, about business and it changes the way that we uh, behave around business. So it actually is quite strong. We're changing... Um, Starting with mindset, the way we think and the way we feel and the way we behave. If you can get a team of positive with growth mindset, um, you can achieve a lot. If you allow <clears throat> into that, um, so I suppose it might be worth su suggesting what I perceive growth mindset to be. It's, it's those that are positively curious, um, I would say positively expectant, expectant of good things and ready to learn and if you can create a team like that you can pretty much take that team to anything that's excellent i remember one of your slides was about the three different types of employees and you had the you had the explorers you had the tourists and you had the prisoners so yeah, i really I, enjoy that so tell us more and again i just give a shout out to, <laughs> to professor bill owlett in mit for the in the uh he's the professor of entrepreneurship in um the Sloan School of Management, I, I pinched that from him, I have to say. But again, it resonated that you're ready to learn, expectant and curious. Um, what you don't want is tourists, those that, that, don't have, um, com that don't have commitment, possibly playful, but very easily distracted. And absolutely what you don't want is um, people with fixed mindsets, people are prisoners to their own beliefs and fortune. Can I ask you, it came up in conversation outside of your presentation, um, you've had long affiliation with the NDRC or you've worked with uh, startups in the NDRC. Do you want to tell us a bit about that side of you? Yeah, well, I wouldn't want to overplay it. I think what <clears throat> my affiliation is, what, one, I admire what they've done. I think that they were came out and what this part of the strategy and part of their strategic alliance uh, with RDI, uh, with the Republic of Work, um, Dog Patch Labs and the Porter Shed. Um, I think what they had in common was a growth mindset. So going back to 2017, when there was a think tank just up the road here in Fexco, um, it was, you could nearly see those that were sort of flocking together, those that were in it for passion. The, the raison d'etre, the reason that they were there was really positive. And I don't think that uh, something that uh, Niall Larkin mentioned when I arrived here yesterday, that he remembers the mindset that was in the room. And that gave me inspiration to just add a little bit to it today. But my role uh, with the NDRC was that I was approached during the bid process to have a look at the strategy uh, with Patrick and then to support him during the bid process and the negotiations. Yeah. Um, just one final question, uh, Michael. If someone was interested in finding out more about what you do, how could they get in touch? Um, I'm, I tend to uh, LinkedIn by the main. And uh, so look me up, Michael O'Gorman, uh, Pathway Business Solutions, and you'll get me on LinkedIn. 
Perfect. That is great. Michael, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome.